Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today in Nerd Sports, we're going to talk about water polo. The great, great sport of what? water polo yeah, it was the preferred sport of captain jonathan archer from enterprise yeah what's really strange though is i watched the uh, reason why i bring that up and i just flipped on it was uh i was watching this thing of different the different sizes of re- arenas and everything and there's actually two styles of water polo mm-hmm. and like uh was it nepal they have a water. They have a water polo ring, and it's right on the coast, uh, going to the Mediterranean Sea. And if you go over that, and if if it's harsh waters, I mean, you're gone. You're fucking gone. You're <laughs> you're 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 going to sea. It. Look it up, Nepal water uh, water polo. Uh, I'm I'm taking your word for it. I'm just kind of letting some of our viewers revel in the fact that you're talking about water polo and there's two different sizes. You did that. Huh. Mm-hmm. Huh. Okay. I but. was trying to do visual, but, you know, screw you. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> totally okay. I mean... You went visual. It's like you went fishing and it was this big. (laughs) But today, oh, today there is actual baseball news and there's baseball news that I can, I, oh, it makes me happy. It makes me as a fan of the Red Sox, like emotional because my boy, Big Poppy, David Ortiz. Got elected into the Hall of Fame on his first try today. Awesome. Yeah, I, I read that because Dude. you like super posted it on my thing. I mean, bro, it just. It, I'm surprised you didn't put it on an Angry Me uh, production page. Well, I, I posted a meme. Yeah, no, I've seen that. It was right. a funny meme. So, all right, so we're going to, well, let me see here. Where is, all right, so let me read this here. Okay, so. Credit for this article uh, goes to uh, Ian Brown. He's a uh, sports writer. Okay. Um, This was posted today at uh, 5.20 p.m. So it's just a couple hours old. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this. It says, when David Ortiz went on one of his patented postseason tears in 2013, saving games and at times the season Saving, okay, because I can read, now I feel like you. Okay, when David Ortiz went on one of his patented postseason tears in 2013, saving games at times and then in the season at others, his teammates went from calling him Big Poppy to Cooperstown. As a result of the 22, or 2022 Hall of Fame voting, as the results of the 2022 Hall of Fame voting became official on Tuesday, that Cooperstown moniker bestowed upon him all those years ago never seemed more appropriate known for his late game heroics as a player david ortiz got into the hall of fame in the earliest inning possible being selected in his first time on the ballot it's a joyous moment for ortiz who celebrated his crowning baseball accomplishment in his native dominican republic the gregarious former slugger who went from a platoon player in minnesota to an icon in his 14 seasons in boston which spanned from 2003 to 2016 will be formally inducted into the uh, in a ceremony or at a ceremony in cooperstown new york on july 24th 
Uh, the moment will be celebrated by Bostonians, Dominicans, and much of the baseball world with his wide smile, booming voice, and bling-filled wardrobe. Ortiz was one of the most productive and charismatic stars of his era. Serving as primarily a designated hig- hitter, arguably the best of all time in that position, did not slow down Ortiz's march to Cooperstown. By comparison, Edgar Martinez, another stud designated hitter, finally got in two years ago on his 10th and final year on the ballot. Early in David Ortiz's career, it was hard to imagine he'd ever be in the Cooper, or Cooperstown conversation. For the Twins, from 1997 to 02, Ortiz played almost exclusively right-handed bat uh, against right-handed pitchers, and and had a 2.66 batting average, a 4.61 uh, slugging percentage, with just 58 home runs and 238 RBIs over over the span of 1,693 plate appearances for the Twins. The Twins released him on December 16th of 2002, and the Red Sox signed him a month later to a modest one-year deal at $1.25 million. The interest on the open market was tepid for Ortiz, and at some point during that time period, Red Sox ace Pedro Martinez ran into David Ortiz at a restaurant in the Dominican Republic and was shocked to hear that his friend was out of work. So Martinez spoke to Larry Lucchino, the team's president and CEO at the time, to put in a good word. Lucchino passed it on to Theo Epstein, who was the general manager for the Red Sox back then, and the rest became history. When Ortiz got to the Red Sox, he learned the art. He learned the art of great hitting from new teammates like Manny Ramirez and Nomar Garcia Parra. Affectionately, you know, affectionately known as Noma. Anyways. Disenchanted with the lack of playing time early in that 03 season, Ortiz's agent, uh, Fern Cusa, actually asked Epstein if his client could be traded. But after Shea Hillenbrand was dealt to the Diamondbacks at the end of May, a full-time lineup spot opened up for Ortiz, who spent the rest of his career as one of the most feared hitters in the game. There we go. Uh, his number 34 was retired on the right-hand facade at Fenway Park less than a year after he took his last at-bat, which is an unprecedented move by the Red Sox and by basically any team. Um, a street and a bridge were named in his honor in Boston's back day or back bay. I've got a picture with uh, with the sign for David Ortiz Drive. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's on, it's on my uh, TikTok video that uh, I posted back in November um af- after asking my uh now fiance to marry me on the field at Fenway Park in a very epic fashion um Big Poppy became a civic treasure forever in Boston when he spoke passionately dur- during a pregame ceremony at Fenway Park 5 days after the mon- uh, marathon bombings in 2013 it it edits this in the in the article but I'm going to quote cuz uh, I think we're past the 5 minutes and if not oh well quote this is our fucking city. Ortiz bellowed to the Fenway crowd, and nobody is going to dictate our freedom. Stay strong. And then he walks into the dugout, fired up that team, fired up that fan base, and that team went on a tear. Okay. Ortiz's brilliant run in Boston included a trio of World Series championships to include 2004 when they broke the curse, 2007, and 2013, the first, of the th- the first three for the Red Sox since 1918. While there were many contributors or contributors to Boston's renaissance, Ortiz was at the center of it. In the regular season, he was an utter force in those Red Sox years, bashing 483 of his 541 career home runs to go with a 956 on base percentage. Only Ted Williams hit more homers in a Red Sox uniform than Ortiz did. Damn. How good was he uh, right until the end? Ortiz's, uh, 1.021 on base percentage in his final major league season at the age of 40 led baseball. He also mauled 38 home runs and perhaps the best final season by a retiring hitter ever. But it was in the postseason that Ortiz took it to another level. The moment, <clears throat> the moments that he put the Red Sox or he put the Red Sox on his back were numerous. The most notable, of course, were his heroics in the 04 American League Championship Series against the rival Yankees. The Red Sox trailed that series three games to none, and no team in history had ever come back from that deficit in October. And and, and no team in professional sports in a best-of-seven series has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit. 
Ortiz hit a walk-off home run to stave off a sweep in the 12th inning of game four. He looped a walk-off single into the very or into center the very next day in the 14th inning of game five, moving the series back to the Bronx. And in game seven, Red Sox finally exercised their demons against the Yankees with Ortiz setting the tone by unloading for a two-run home run in the first inning. Then, of course, we know that the Red Sox went on to sweep the Cardinals in the World Series in 2004. Then again, mm-hmm. they did it in 2007 when they swept the Rockies in the World Series. But then there was 2013. The Red Sox were down four runs and four outs away from trailing the Tigers two games to none in the American League uh, Championship Series. Justin Verlander was still pitching for Detroit at the time, and um, he, he was going to be the game three starter. So, you know, it wasn't looking good. But Ortiz stepped up and belted a grand slam against reliever Joaquin Benoit that sent Torrey Hunter sprawling into the Boston bullpen. You can look that image up. Look up Torrey Hunter 2013 ALCS, and you're going to see a picture of his feet sticking up over the bullpen wall and the Boston cop that was on duty in the bullpen with his arms outstretched like this. It became one of the more iconic. What is it? Tory Hunter. Tory is spelled T O R I I Hunter. 2013 ALCS. Just look at some of the images, and you're going to see the picture of his feet sticking up in the air on the other side of the of the outfield wall because he's he went over the wall into the Boston bullpen, missed the catch, and the Boston police officer that was uh, uh, per, per, uh, providing security in the bullpen. He's got his arms up like this. I mean, he's cheering with the rest of the Fenway faithful. When that when that Grand Slam got belted, I'm watching that game. Dude, I am going nuts. I am beside myself. I'm jumping off the couch. I am just like, dude, I'm pumped up. You know, I mean, David Ortiz for the longest time. <laughs> that is so fucking hilarious. I'm watching it right. I'm looking at it right now. Dude, the video clip of that of that Grand Slam gives me chills to this day okay and i'm going to read the rest of this article here in just a second but i mean the tigers never recovered from that home run that 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 championship series ultimately went six games and the red sox won it in game six to advance to the world series where they beat the cardinals in six games okay but david ortiz is i mean so much larger than life and i mean i know that he's just a ball player i know he's a human being i know he puts his pants on one leg at a time just like everybody else or most of everybody but the effect that david ortiz has had on me that you know had on my sons uh i mean it's the effect that he has had on red sox nation as a whole It's mind numbing. I mean, we can't, I mean, there's no way to quantify that, you know, the effect that he had. Um, you know, in 2013, that was the last World Series that David Ortiz played in. Mm. He had a fall classic for the ages. He hit 688, which was an overall 11 for 16. He had two doubles, two home runs, six RBIs, eight walks. And a 1.948 on base percentage as the Red Sox won in six games over St. Louis. And he was named the 2013 World Series MVP. Okay. I mean, this guy, he's got, uh, I mean, he's got so, it's just, I mean, he's got three world championships. Uh, something like seven silver silver slugger awards I mean, it just you know it, it, he's got a he's got a world series mvp t- uh, you know uh, award to his to his credit 541 home runs for a career and you know and and i'm not afraid to admit this as a baseball fan but more importantly as a red sox fan i remember in 2016 it's the playoffs it's uh, the uh, the divisional series, and I remember thinking that as David Ortiz walked up to the plate, 
this is his last at bat. <laughs> I, I love listening to the games on the radio versus you know watching them a lot of times, just because you know I, I like I love listening to Joe Castiglione call a game, you know, because he kind of puts you there, I and mean, it's not so much he's reciting stats or anything like that. He makes the game personable. He he tells stories and things of that nature. But getting back to David Ortiz, I cried. I cried at that at bat because I knew that we were never going to get to see something that great ever again. And if it was, it was going to be a very long time. Yeah. Because he made such a generational impact on the, on, on the game and on the Red Sox and, and, and the Red Sox, you know, faithful. Well, he loved the game and he loved the spot that he was at. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got I've got a book that he wrote called Poppy. It's a it's basically an autobiography, um, starting out growing up in the Dominican Republic, and then trying to make his way through the baseball ranks and ultimately his time through you know in, in baseball with the Red Sox. And uh, you know I. It was a couple of years ago that uh, David Ortiz was actually shot. And while he was at home in the Dominican Republic, he was sitting outside in a restaurant. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, dude, you want to talk about pissing off the wrong crowd? Holy shit. I mean, you could almost hear people all over Boston, all over New England, all over the country going... I need your help. <laughs> we going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Right. You can't ask me questions about it. You, 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 I can't tell you what it is. You can't ask me questions about it later. But we're going to hurt some people. Who's and you Kyle almost heard taking? everybody in the country unanimous, unanimous, unanimously recite the line, who's Kyle we taking? Yeah. I mean, there were people in Boston, I'm not kidding you, that were legitimately going to fly down to the Dominican Republic and hunt this dude down. Yeah, I, I I seen the articles, man. It was so fucked off. It was like uh, it's one of those things you. It's like if uh, funny story and it, it involves nerve and sports at the same time. A uh, friend of mine, my my brother Jason, uh, he has a guy in Japan. What he yeah. what he does for a living is he takes celebrities around japan and basically becomes an interpreter well he was an interpreter for stan lee well what had happened was is stan lee had was supposed to be in the executive uh hotel room while his manager had just a regular hotel room well the manager told uh told him to uh, send everything to the manager's hotel room. Anything for Stanley has to go to the manager's hotel room first. Mm-hmm. Well, every time that he would go and take everything to the manager's hotel room, he ended up seeing Stanley. He got confused, and then one day the Tokyo Giants came with him after he figured everything out that Stanley was staying in the manager's room. And not an executive room. Right. So the Tokyo Giants and uh, the guy that does the uh, the job. Does I play for them? Yeah. Yeah. Was almost going to beat this manager. And when I saw an article about the uh, elderly abuse to Stan Lee, I was like, oh, yeah, I know. I already know. And I, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm, I was fucking. I was like, someone told me it's like, hey, where are you going? I'm just gonna make some napalm. You could almost hear the Avengers theme song being played as droves of Marvel fans, all dressed up in cosplay, unloaded from planes in Tokyo. <laughs> and yes, yes. And you well, not even. See, you well, could almost the... see Chris Evans in full costume carrying the shield, going. He's got Mjolnir here. He's like, Avengers! <laughs> Assemble! 
<laughs> and then they charge down the streets of Tokyo. Well, the whole the whole Tokyo Giants will love Stan Lee, and they're gonna beat the shit out of them. And it took a lot of effort from what the guy was talking about. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, we were we were gonna kill that some bitch." And he also knows some of the uh, yakuza, and they they would have gotten rid of the body. I'm like, who's this? Who's this person that he messed with? Stan Lee. Oh, that motherfucker's gone. <laughs> I mean, you think about this. On a baseball level, you've got David Ortiz almost getting murdered. Enraging the entirety of Red Sox Nation. Yes. And a majority of the baseball world. To include, yes, some Yankees fans, there are shreds of decency in that archaic barbarian kingdom of theirs. I gotcha. Anyways, that will be one of the very few ever things that I say decent about the Yankees or their fan base. Anyways, moving on. And then you got Stan Lee. Being abused by his manager. A Tokyo, a Japan baseball league team. And every comic book nerd around the world. Willing to descend upon the capital of Japan. (laughs) Yikes. (laughs) No, no. Sucks to be him, right? I I can just see this now, I was like, Dave, what are you doing? Uh, what are you cooking up in the microwave, Spider? Dave, you're not going to. Stan Lee's in trouble. It, it might work now. <laughs> yeah, it might work. Um, they actually did catch that guy, the guy that shot David Ortiz. Like that night. Yeah. It was a quick. It was a quick. Uh, it was. And it they was... beat the shit out of that guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they fucking. Bl- I, I, and I'll, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't keep too much sports knowledge and everything. That's why you're our sports guy. But I read that article right when I was like, "Who's David Ortiz? Renaissance fan? Okay, whatever." And they beat. I mean, they. He's he's probably retarded now. How bad they beat him. I mean, because you've got a lot of baseball talent that comes out of the Dominican. Yes. But there's only a handful of people that have done what David Ortiz and have done what Pedro Martinez have done. Yeah. And it's. And those and Dominican Republic people, they, if you succeed, like they've they feel got baseball they, they've academies. Succeeded. Yeah. Like you, when you sign to go to a baseball academy, in the Dominican Republic, that's your high school. Like, oh, what academy did you graduate from kind of a thing? Yeah. So, I mean, baseball is their passion. Love that to death. I mean, because, I mean, I, I'm an unabashed lover of the game of baseball. Okay. <laughs> and I am even more of an unabashed Red Sox fan. Okay, to the point where on my Twitter bio, and I think even my uh, my TikTok bio, I mean it, it contains the words Red Sox believer. Okay, okay, I love that team. Yeah, and when you are such a force. I mean, it, it's to me, it's kind of like, uh, like John Lester retired the other day. He pitched for two World Series championship teams for the Red Sox, 04 and 07, or no, 07 and 13. Okay. Um, and then he went to go play for the Cubs, won a World Series with them, and went to go play for the Washington Nationals, um, and then ultimately retired. I mean, I think he had like a short little season there with the Cardinals and then you know, but anyways, so John Lester's part of Red Sox royalty as well, but David Ortiz is, is, I mean, he's transcendent. I mean, 
they retired his number one year after he retired from baseball. Nobody in the Red Sox organization will ever wear the number 34 again. Hmm. You know, so, I mean, when you go to Fenway and you go look at right field and then the upper deck facade, they've got a, they've got a list of numbers there. And David Ortiz is the last one to have had his, have, has, have had his number retired. Um, and that just goes to show what kind of an impact that this guy had. And, and in a lot of ways continues to have on the city of Boston and the Red Sox nation. Because, I mean, I still have my David Ortiz jersey. I'm wearing it right now. You know, I mean, you go all over around, you go all over, all over the city of Boston, especially on game day, and you will lose track of the number of David Ortiz jerseys that you see standing around. And anytime he makes an appearance at a game, dude, the crowd goes absolutely nuts. And you hear that chant, poppy, 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 you know, and it's like he was the heart and soul of that team during those championship years. And the last time that I got this amped up, this jazzed, and this emotional over a Hall of Fame uh, inductee for the Baseball Hall of Fame was King Griffey Jr. Yeah, okay. You know, and, you know, I've, I've always been a Red Sox fan, but hands down, favorite player all time is always going to be King Griffey Jr. And I wish to God he'd have been able to play for the Red Sox. But when he got elected to the Hall of Fame, I cried because I grew up watching him play. You know, I got to see him play whenever my dad was stationed up there in Washington state. I I mean, I I, I've seen so many of his home runs in person. It's ridiculous, you know? And, and anytime anybody asks you about what a baseball swing is supposed to look like, they'll always tell you King Griffey jr. Cause you can't teach that kind of a swing. I mean, people imitate it all the time. I mean, hell, on MLB the show, uh, the, the video game, you know, you can you, you customize your you know your own character. You know, and you do your, um, you know, path to the you know path you know road to the show kind of a thing, right? Where you start mm-hmm. the liners and work your way. My home run swing is King Griffey Junior. swing. You know, I'm I'm left handed. King Griffey Junior. is left handed. Hell, David Ortiz is left handed. But anytime I'd stepped into the batter's box and, you know, and I, I felt like I actually got a hold of one. I mean, I always had that finish and that follow through like King for junior dropped that bat. And I started walking towards first base, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's what every kid wants, you know, but I mean, with David Ortiz, it's such a transcendent thing. And, you know, and they got a lot of the haters out there already. They're like, well, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens should have gotten in. You know, they, you know, they used steroids, but so did David Ortiz. No, David Ortiz was put on that list, but he was exonerated. And he was probably one of the more frequently tested players throughout that entire ordeal. And he never tested positive for steroids ever. On a side note, though, I just, I just realized something. What's that? Is. I don't, I don't, I, I never understood the steroid thing, you know, having an edge because you're using chemicals and everything. I mean, if everybody's using it at the same time, it's basically how's your roid guy going to compete with my roid guy? Well, the, see, the thing of it is, is that it tarnishes the purity of the game, uh, purity of the game. Okay. Babe Ruth hit all the home runs that he hit on a diet of beer and hot dogs. Okay. Um, There was a game at the old ballpark in Arlington back when the Rangers, you know, before the Globe Life Stadium, they had the Rangers ballpark in Arlington, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Barry Bonds was going out to his position in right field. And some Texas Rangers fans 
had hung a banner over the railing. It says, Babe Ruth did it with beer and hot dogs. How did you do it, Barry? Okay, I see what you got in going yeah. on there. I mean, if you're going to play a majority of your career with a needle hanging out of your hip, I mean, you've got all the talent in the world. You have to have talent. You have to have skill in order to hit that 90 plus mile an hour fastball and and hit it as far as these guys do with the frequency that they do it. But there's no reason to bulk up that way. I mean, you've got guys that are a quarter of that size a half a size to a quarter the size of barry bonds was and they're they're launching they're launching home runs at like 118 miles an hour off the bat there's no there's no reason to have to do that they say roger clemens juiced and i i just i if you if you juiced if you used the steroids to get an unfair advantage to play the game, if you get in, you get in on a, on a, on a, on a, uh, on a legacy vote, on a legacy ballot, you know, and they, all these people are talking about, well, it's been years since they played and they played in the steroid era. Yeah. Well, okay, fine. If, you're going to get inducted into the hall of fame. Your hall of fame inductee plaque should have an asterisk on it. Your yeah. records should have an asterisk on it. Okay. If you were found to be guilty of, of, of using steroids, it's, it's, it's like Alex Rodriguez. He, and this was his first year on the ballot too. And uh, I mean, he only got like 33% of the vote. You know, which is pissy because you have to have eighty percent to get on. So the only player to get act or to, uh, to the the only player to make it into the hall from the sports writers ballots was David Ortiz this year. There was no players elected last year. It was all legacy players and uh, you know or, or legacy figure, uh, you know, legacy players and stuff like that from that that were no longer eligible on the writers ballot. There was no there was no players last year named to the 2021 Hall of Fame class. That's, oh wow. So, but David Ortiz first ballot. He's going to Cooperstown, man. And man, I'm going <laughs> I tell you what, dude. That that is going to be probably one of the largest crowds for a uh for for a, a a Cooperstown induction ceremony, mm. and if I may not be able to go, but you can damn bet I'm going to be sitting there. I'm going to be watching that on TV. I'm going to be wearing my David Ortiz jersey. I want to have my hat on, and I'm going to be cheering. I'm going to be crying while he's talking. And whenever they they show his plaque, and it's got that Red Sox cap on it, dude, that is going to be that. I'm going to be up here. <laughs> and it's going to be great, man. And, and it's just, it's little things like that. It's, it's the reason why I love this game. It's the reason why I love any time that you, I mean, you asked me, you know, Hey, are we, you know, we're we going to be able to shoot today. And I'm like, Oh yeah, no, we're shooting. Cause in all caps, there's baseball news. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so, finally get to talk in a smart way. Get to talk about baseball. Oh my God. But uh, you know, I, I just, I, I want to, I just want to congratulate wholeheartedly resoundingly congratulations david ortiz big poppy man it just thank you for the memories thank you for the championships and and just just thank you for bringing your 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 personality and your force to the game and you are going to live forever and and you know i mean you're going to live forever now so congratulations david um we're going to move on to nfl news (laughs) the uh Wow, this was a great weekend of games. And our picks officially went 0 for 4. And I'm okay with the the 0 for 4. We're going to we're going to let's get into this and break this down a little bit here. Okay, so 
It was like chunking another piece of meatloaf into my mouth here. Um, and I, I'm posting shit on Facebook while we do this. But you know what's sad though, and I'll let everybody know on the secret. The only reason why I do shit while I'm Facebook, uh, while we're actually doing the show, mm-hmm. I don't know why, but it's like a hundred times easier. To you do your uh do the uh, photos and everything on Facebook with my phone than it is to do it on uh my laptop because I can do the same thing. Uh, when I actually do with my laptop to do like announcements and everything like that, like if we're going live and whatnot, and copy and paste and everything, yeah, the laptop's easy. But for some ungodly reason. You have to have both to coordinate and to have a lot faster and do a lot better. It's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so this weekend was probably some of the best football we've seen all year. I mean, you think about the number of games that are played every weekend over the course of the 18 weeks. We saw some of our best football this weekend. We really did. I've I, I actually watched uh, the 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 one game that you were watching also was the Buccaneers and the uh, L.A. Rams. Yeah, and that was to the to the like wire. All, all the games that were this weekend were to the wire. The game to watch, we will get to, because it was the last game of the weekend. But first on the slate was the Bengals at the Titans. I thought that, okay, Titans, they're coming off of a bye week. They're they're, they're 8-0 when they come off of a bye. They got Derrick Henry back. Ryan Tannehill's not going to have to throw the ball a bunch because he's got Derrick Henry, his workhorse. Uh, They've got that other running back that they have. Um and Cincinnati was going into that game. They were 0-7 on the road as a franchise during the playoffs. They've never won a road playoff game. So I was like, ah, okay. I mean, it, it, it was a walk-off field goal. Like, as time is expiring, the Bengals kick a field goal. And beat the Titans, the number one seed, Tennessee Titans, at home to advance to the AFC or to the AFC championship game. And it's the Bengals. So you don't, you have, what have we heard of the Bengals? Right. And it's like, yeah, it's the Bengals. We're talking about the Bengals, you know, but, but Joe Burrow, (laughs) this is going to piss a lot of Cowboys fans off. Joe Burrow in his second year, Already has more playoff wins than Dak Prescott. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> you know, <it's> just like, <laughs> oh, oh man. Um, the next game, the the second Saturday game, which was the matinee game. Um, no, not matinee game. It was the primetime game. It was uh, the 49ers at the Packers. We had the Packers winning. Yeah, that okay. was, I mean, they they literally had the. The the one thing that was told to me by the 49ers specialist that was talking to me, uh, Green Bay had a lot of people that was out for injuries. They did, but man, I mean, so and, but and, the 40, and, 49ers again, as time was expiring. Their field goal kicker, who has been perfect this postseason, kicks a walk-off field goal. 13-10, final. 49ers yeah, they... go into the NFC Championship game. Now, yeah, I can't believe that botch. But he, he, in, in the defense of this year, how many field goal kickers has botched it this year? I mean, every team. Every one field of goal them. Kicker, kicker, every one of them. Botched. Nobody went perfect this year. I know. And usually that's that's usually the easiest thing to do to get. There have been more blocks this year than I think in recent history. Yeah. Um, but 
Now, the only thing is now the 49ers, they're going to travel regardless for the NFC Championship game. They have to know who they're going to play. Are they going to go back to L.A. to play their divisional rivals, or are they going to go to Tampa Bay? We had Tampa Bay winning that game because it's Tom Brady. It's the playoffs, right? We, Tom Brady. we went with the GOAT. We went with the GOAT. Hey, you know, the, the Rams shut them down the first half. But the, the second half, I guess a mob boss went and visited the Rams and was like, you're not going to win this game. You know, I mean, something. Because Tom Brady just drive after drive after drive after drive. I mean, dude, this guy is relentless. He came back and tied the game. Right? And it was like, Can you hear uh, that? huh? Can you hear that? Okay, I was just making sure it didn't uh, interrupt the the cast. We have I have an ambulance going around. Oh, this right. is like the second one today over by us. So, but you do live on the rough side of town. Yeah. Well, you live over by the avenues. I'm pretty much on the avenues. No, you are pretty much on the avenues. Um. I know that so you're I, 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 I my, my gun sleeps with sure. uh, my, my gun sleeps underneath my pillow. Yes. Yes. Your gun sleeps with a gun under the pillow. Yeah. Um, the 49ers, I mean, I'm not 49ers, the Rams. They, it, they, it really was that last play. I thought it was, it was the last two over. plays. It's like yeah, two I'll, deep passes and it's like, who the fuck is running your secondary? Yeah. I mean, seriously, you have been able to shut these guys down all day, and now all of a sudden, you forget how to fucking play safety. Like, it was, oh, I'm going to drop in. You know, it's like, what are you, what are you playing a stunt down the, you know, in the middle? I mean, what are you, what are you there for to back up the linebacker? No, your job is to pick up those receivers that get dumped by the quarterbacks. So, I mean, what the hell, Cooper Cup all the way down the middle twice. To get into field goal, field goal uh, range. It was basically a chip shot. You know. Anyway, so it's going to be the Rams and the 49ers. They're going to play at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. Which is going to be the, uh, the site of the Super Bowl this year. So the Rams are looking to become the second team to host a, a Super Bowl. They're hoping to become the second team to win the Super Bowl that they host. Obviously, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers did it last year. Anyways, so the game, in my mind, was the best game. The Bills at the Chiefs. I didn't catch that one. Dude. In the last minute and 59, minute and 58 seconds of the game, there was a combined score of 25 points. That was two touchdowns and a field goal. Or, or two touchdowns, a field goal, and like one tie. You know, but it was three lead changes. It was Chiefs went ahead, then the Bills went ahead, and then the Chiefs went down and kicked the field goal to tie the game to send it into overtime. Man, okay. I'm, I'm, I should have watched that game. Dude, I wanted the Bills to win this game so bad. Jared Allen, the quarterback for Buffalo, played his ass off. He literally left everything on the field. I mean, there is not a single person in this world that can be mad at Jared Allen this, or this week at all. I mean, the city of Buffalo is heartbroken, obviously, because they're like they were this close from you know going to the AFC championship game. And they were going to go into that game being the heavy favorites. Um, but again, it's the NFL's got to do something about their overtime rules because Jared Allen never got a chance to touch the ball in overtime because the Chiefs scored a touchdown on their opening drive. I, I think that every team should get equal possession. And then if the second team does not score a touchdown, then you declare a winner. Or if both teams kick a field goal, then you go to, okay, you have to score a touchdown 
you know, kind of it's something. I mean, it's 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 got to be figured out somehow because this rule. There's a lot of people that are like calling for that rule to get changed the way that they conduct overtime. The overtime used to be sudden death where it was you could go down and kick a field goal and that'd be the end of the game. And it just got so lackluster. And then they were like, oh, we'll, we'll change it to everybody gets an equal possession. But touch, if a touchdown is scored on the opening drive, then the game's over. You know, I mean, it's basically the same damn thing. Yeah. Right. So, but that, I mean, it was just so, I mean, the, the, the game, I mean, it just the, the slate of games, the four games that we got to watch this weekend were just, they were great. It was great football. Um, it really was. I mean, the, the yeah. games that I ended up watching, I was like, oh, I, I, it was it was on the edge of your sheet. See, ah, sheet, yeah, see. But uh, so who are who are, your, who are the picks so we can get this over with so I can uh, get it? <laughs> yeah, I know you're tired. Yeah. Um, we're both tired. I had a 14 hour day yesterday. <laughs> okay. We have the Bengals at the Chiefs for the AFC Championship title. Um Honestly, I really kind of want the Bengals to win. I know it's not it it, it may may not happen, but I kind of want to see the Bengals win. I want to see the Bengals win. I'm willing to take the L on this one. But I think um I, I I honestly think I, I'm with you. The Chiefs, they're the Chiefs are going to get the pick this week because, um, you know, and 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 I don't mean to I don't mean to dishearten or piss off anybody who's a Bengals fan by any stretch of the imagination. I I would love to see the Bengals win this game, but I think going into it, especially after the win that that Kansas City fought for against the Bills, this team is completely motivated. This is true. And they are going to be firing on all cylinders. And and I think Patrick Mahomes is going to get in there and he's going to do what Patrick Mahomes does. And he is going kind of, to absolutely dominate. I'm I'm just curious with the last time last time the Bengals won us uh were at the Super Bowl. I think it was like eighty three, like eighty nine. I think I already did this. Yeah. Yeah, eighty one, eighty eight. Yeah. So now we have, which is basically an NFC East game. I mean, uh, West game. It's the Forty ers at the Rams. I have no love for either one of these teams. And and to be honest with you, the only game that I'm even remotely interested in watching is going to be the AFC Championship game. And that's just because it has the potential for being great theater. But because for the season finale, the last regular season game, the San Francisco 49ers went into L.A. and beat the Rams to get into the playoffs. And If I remember correctly, this is basically going to be the rubber match between these two teams because I think they split the season series a game apiece. So you know what? If we we might want to do the uh, what the hell episode recorded, and we won't do it live this week because I kind of want to watch these games. I'm down with that, and plus. I've got my boys this weekend. Yeah. Mindy, her sister, and all her boys. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I've got, I've got a ton of company this weekend. Yeah. But, um, so, um. <sighs> oh, uh, and we got to do a psychos and sociopaths one, too. Fuck. We'll get that knocked out. Well, I have. Maybe tomorrow night. Okay. That's fine with but me. Anyway, um, I'm kind of leading the 49ers on this one. So, 
So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll take the Chiefs over the Bengals and the Niners over the Rams. And that's just for more, you know, for lack of anything else, it is um, just out of sheer necessity, honestly. But. Let me go ahead. Yeah, I know that last week sucked. Blow me. But uh, I had this, I had this one, I don't know where I put it. For this week's psychos and sociopaths, I think I put it with Thomas's stuff. It was some chick that they had her for. Uh, where did I put this? Oh. Just recently. Anyways, I'll I'll figure it out and find it. Cause this is this is kind of I need to keep separate things somehow. I don't have that many. I didn't find watch it. Anyways. But uh, if anything, I'll figure out somebody else to another person to go over. Yeah, we'll figure that out. And then plus we've got that update with the Wichita Falls uh, serial murder. Yes, I keep on forgetting about it because you met. You need to stop well, well, messaging well, well, me and uh, like just, just send me the message well, through like on my phone because it took me like two weeks to find it because I don't use my, uh, actual Insta, my personal Instagram anymore. Half the time. It's always, no, I, set sent, to, I sent you that message. I sent you the link to that article. I, I texted it to you. So check, check our text. No, thread. you didn't. Oh no. You, I sent you it to you on it messenger. To, you sent it through Instagram. No, sir. I didn't. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, someone asked me to do Dr. Death. There was another Dr. Death or something like that. Can't Fine, even. whatever. But check check your messenger thread or, you know, something like that. I'm checking where you actually send it to me from. Supreme Court denies Wichita Falls serial killer, uh, killer review from Instagram. I don't know why. I didn't, it didn't, po- I didn't, I didn't post it through Instagram, I promise you. I don't know why, but your stuff goes through Instagram. I honestly, I, I just don't know why. Well, that's weird because I'm looking at the message thread that I sent you. Okay. Wow. Why do you have two? That's really weird. Anyway, I posted it through the Facebook messenger. See, look right there. I don't know why it goes your, through my, there's uh, your name. Yeah. It, it's, it's it, you going know what? through the Instagram. I'll just text it to you from now on. Yeah. It, but, it's, uh, it's it's nothing like you. It's just the uh, the stupidity of the messenger services. Because yeah, I so. well, I have it. I have it set up to where I get all my messages through Messenger from Instagram and uh, Facebook. Mm-hmm. So I can. I'm I'm the person to talk to on those. Uh, you're probably caught talking to on those. Uh, uh, social media accounts you're the twitter guy and i'm also the guy that does the uh youtube which i thought i gave it to you to the youtube uh account too no you haven't given me that yet but i'll, I'll give it to um, you next time we're there but yeah no um, i can't think of any other news that i really want to go over i know there's i mean a the coaches yeah the, the the coaches they're they're um michael boy or the, oh, uh, Sean, Payton. Coach. Sean Payton from the uh, the head coach of the Saints uh, had, uh, notified the team today that he will be stepping down as head coach. Yeah, that one too. So there was a couple of coaching stuff that was happening. 
Yeah, as as the off season approaches and as the off season for football gets here, we'll go into the um, you know, Black Friday or Black Monday, so to speak, for for coaches. We'll find out who's been fired, who's getting dismissed, who's going to be up for interviews, that kind of a thing. Yeah, because that's uh, happening what next? As because the Super Bowl's in like three weeks, and okay. everything usually happens after the Super Bowl. But, uh, um, yeah, there's, baseball there's... related news. The pace has picked up at the trade at the at the uh, CBA talks between the owners and the players union. Mm-hmm. The players union has submitted a counter proposal to the ownership group, so we'll see what happens. Okay. So um, we're still looking at that. That's I, I think that uh, you know, the players are getting a little antsy. I think that the owners are getting a little antsy because two weeks after the Super Bowl, pitchers and catchers are supposed to report for spring training. Yeah. And if there is no baseball on the field when there's supposed to be baseball on the field, you're gonna have fringe friends and you're gonna have fans alike, diehard, lifelong, new and fringe baseball fans putting on gamer headsets, playing video games, watching freaking Pornhub, or they're going to be going to YouTube watching old re- replays of old games. You're not wrong. And they're going to be tuning out. You're definitely not wrong. So I, I honestly, I think they need to all pull their heads out of their collective asses. I need to, I think that they need to get up and they, and they need to do something. And that something is learn to get, learn to get along. And put baseball back on the field. Yeah. But other than that, I am David Dickerman. I am Johnny Skelton. And this is What the Hell Nerd Sports. Thank you very much for watching. Go Boston. Let's go, Poppy. <laughs>